Hey guys, it's Josh with Budget Mechanic. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about a very common issue, overheating. Now if your car is overheating, the main thing is you gotta stop driving it right away because if you run a car too hot too long, you will do a lot of damage to the engine. Now I found there's five really common reasons that a car overheats. And instead of taking your car to a mechanic and having them tell you what's wrong, I'm gonna show you how to diagnose it yourself and save a bunch of money. Now the car I'm working on today does have an overheating issue and we're gonna figure out what that is. Generally, when you find your issue, you're gonna stop there. For the sake of this video though, I'm gonna take you through all of the five most common causes. So the number one reason engines overheat is the coolant leaks out. So the first thing you wanna do when you get under your hood is check your radiator and make sure you have the proper amount of coolant in it. So the coolant level should be right here below the cap, but it's totally dry in here. On some radiators, you'll actually be able to see the metal fins down inside here and they should be covered with water. If they're showing above the surface of the water, then there's not enough coolant in there. So since I suspect the coolant level is low in this system, I'm gonna fill the radiator back up. So I do this because if it only takes a couple cups to fill it up, then that's probably not my overheating problem. But if it takes half a gallon or a gallon or more to fill up this system, that's enough to make it overheat. You definitely wanna check with your auto parts store as to what kind of coolant you should be putting in because the different makes and manufacturers have different kinds of coolant, you don't wanna mix them. So this is the level that the coolant should be, right down inside the, under the cap. So it took about three quarters of a gallon to refill this radiator, so I know that it was low, and that's my overheating problem. So now I'm gonna to try to figure out where the leak is coming from. The easiest way to do that is to get under the hood and look for physical signs of leaking coolant. So if the car was just run or is running, you're looking for wet spots uh, where the coolant is actively leaking out. When coolant is dried, it can look white and chalky like a mineral deposit, um, and that can be sprayed or leaked on, on any part of the engine. One common area that you'll see leaks is where the plastic meets the aluminum in the actual radiator itself. Uh, sometimes those seams run along the tops of radiators, sometimes down the side, uh, but that's a common leak area. Next thing you wanna check are rubber coolant lines. The, the biggest offenders are usually your upper and lower radiator hose. This is your upper radiator hose, big thick coolant line. Um, and then the lower radiator hose is on the bottom of the radiator, usually on the opposite corner. If you see a big bulge on a, on a big hose like this, that means it's probably about ready to blow and you wanna probably replace that. But there's lots of little coolant hoses, ones that go to your, to your heater inside the car. These are all hoses that can spring leaks. Another area that's common is if you follow your upper radiator hose to the engine, that's where your thermostat sits. And oftentimes a hose or a gasket will leak at the thermostat housing. Another area where coolant can leak is around the water pump. So you're gonna find where your belt is and um, one of the pulleys on your belt is gonna be your water pump. And you kind of look in that area and see if there's any signs of leaking. And on this car, there's quite a bit of that sort of chalky dried coolant. And I can also tell that it's been dripping on the belts because it's, it's being flung around. You can see signs of it all over the place. That is my main suspect right now is a leaking water pump. So if your coolant was low, but you're having a hard time finding the leak uh, under the hood, go ahead and refill that radiator and start the car and get it up to temperature. You don't want it to overheat again, but get it warmed up and that will sometimes force the leak to show itself through rubber hoses or gaskets or whatever. You can even get down and look underneath and if it's a bad enough leak, you'll see dripping and you can kind of help locate it using that. Budget tip. A lot of the big auto parts stores will lend you a kit for free that you can actually pressurize your cooling system with the car off with a little pump and it'll actually help you hear the hissing or bubbling with the smaller leaks and you can find it that way. If you've determined that your engine doesn't have any coolant leaks, you wanna move on to the second common issue which is cooling fans. And a cooling fan essentially draws air through your radiator to cool down the coolant when your car is not moving. So, a common symptom of a bad cooling fan will be the car is fine until you stop. You're stuck in traffic, you're at a stoplight, all of a sudden the temperature comes up. Might be because your fan is not working. So there's two types of cooling fans. The first one is a direct drive fan, which is just run by the motor. So you can look down and if the middle of your fan is connected to your motor by a shaft, whenever the motor's running, that fan should be spinning. The second type is electronic. So they're not actually connected to the motor at all. They're run by electric motors and they're programmed to come on at certain times. So they're a little bit more complicated. Some cars have one, some cars have two, but those are what we're gonna focus on today and we're gonna show you how to diagnose them. So fans are always gonna be at the front of your engine compartment against your radiator. 
This car here has a single fan and it's covering the whole radiator. Some cars will have two smaller fans directly next to each other. So whether you have one or two electric fans, to start diagnosing, you wanna start this car up and get it up to operating temperature. At operating temperature, or when it's gonna start overheating, the fan or fans should be running to cool it down. So you wanna come in here and make sure that they're actually functioning. If you have a two fan setup and only one of them's running at temperature, make sure your AC is on and that should click on the second fan. Now on this car, the fan was working fine, but if your fan is not functioning at operating temperature, a couple things you wanna check. Make sure that it's physically spinning, that there's no obstructions to the fan blade, and then just check the wiring that's leading into the fan motor. Make sure it's not cut, melted, uh, broken somehow. In order to test the fan motor itself and make sure that's functioning properly, there's a quick budget way using some jumper cables, and I made a video of it, and the link is above. If you determine that the fan motor is working properly, that means it's an issue with your electrical system. So that could be relays, fuses, sensors, but we're gonna have to address that in a separate video. All right, if you found that your fans are functioning properly, we move on to our next common issue, which is the water pump. Now with this vehicle, we've already seen some leaking around it, but there are a couple other things you want to check out in regards to your water pump. Now, when you're looking for your water pump, it's always gonna be driven by a belt. So you're gonna find the belts on your engine. If you're having trouble figuring out what your water pump is, just Google an image for your year making model water pump and match it to what you're seeing here. So once you've located your water pump, you're looking for a couple things, um, mainly that the belt is there and hasn't um, broken and that it functions properly. When the engine's running, it's, it's running smoothly. It's not shaking like a bearing's bad inside, not making a crazy noise. Um, and then also you're looking for that dripping water underneath, which it'll often do if the bearing's gone bad, it'll, it'll drip out through the shaft. And last thing, as I already touched on, you're looking for coolant leaks. So coming out the bottom and specifically with the water pump, it often leaks on the belts, which you get the splatter that we already talked about. It gets flung all around the engine compartment. Even here, you can see the coolant spraying up on the bottom side of the hood from the coolant leaking onto the belts, which is a good indicator that it's coming from the water pump. One little note as well, if you have a really bad water pump, I find that when I'm filling the radiator, I will see or hear coolant leaking out uh, near the water pump just as soon as I start dumping. If you find that your water pump is functioning properly, the fourth common thing that we're gonna look at is a malfunctioning thermostat. And what a thermostat basically does is it stops or allows the circulation of coolant from the radiator through the engine and back to keep the engine at a constant operating temperature. But if that gets stuck closed, it doesn't allow the coolant back into the engine to cool the engine down and you'll get an overheating problem. So one indicator of a failing thermostat will be a sudden fluctuation in your temperature, which you'd see on your dash with your temperature gauge. If that thermostat is sticking, suddenly closing or whatever, you'll see big swings in temperature all of a sudden. That can point to a thermostat sometimes. One common way of testing a thermostat is to remove it from the vehicle, put it in a pot of boiling water and watch to make sure it opens and closes correctly. Um, I find that doesn't really make sense since it's a $10 part. If you're gonna pull it out, why don't you just throw a new one in and ensure that that is not your problem. What I prefer to do is another test that you can do while the thermostat is still installed. On most cars, your thermostat can be found in a little housing that's at the end of your upper radiator hose. So if you follow your upper radiators from the radiator to the engine, the radiator hose will be clamped to a fitting that can be removed in the thermostats underneath. Some cars have it on the reverse where the lower radiator hose down at the bottom side of your radiator will have a hose that goes to the engine as well. Sometimes the thermostat can be under a housing at the end of that hose. First thing you want to do is get your car up to operating temperature and let it sit there for a couple minutes. Once you've let the car run for a couple minutes at operating temperature, shut it off and let's go check it. All right, so what you want to do is you want to test the temperature of the upper and lower radiator hose with your hand. Um, so don't burn yourself, but you want to stick your hand on the hose, see how hot it feels. Then you want to stick your hand in and go to the lower radiator hose and feel that one. But you're going to feel that and compare the temperatures. And if they're vastly different, if one is a lot colder than the other, that can mean that your thermostat is stuck closed and it's not allowing the circulation of coolant. If they're both roughly the same temperature, 
chances are there's a good flow and your thermostat is opening correctly. If it seems like your thermostat is functioning correctly, number five common issue is going to be your radiator cap. So again, don't take this off when the engine is hot, wait until it's cool. But you're looking for a breakdown of the rubber parts inside the, the cap. There's like three different sets of rubber seals and they'll start to crack or they'll break or they'll actually come off and fall into your radiator. So you're inspecting that. Um, in addition, there's a spring built in to these that allow uh, higher pressures to escape into the reservoir. But when that spring starts getting old and weak, it will let coolant out into your reservoir before it should, and you'll actually lose coolant that way. So again, this is one of these things, it's like five, 10 bucks. Sometimes you just wanna get a new one to make sure that's not the problem, but sometimes it is an obviously damaged or old radiator cap. Just a side note, some cars won't have the metal cap on the radiator. They'll have a separate reservoir with a pressurized cap on it somewhere else in, under the hood. Just make sure when you're checking, you're not looking at your overflow tank, which is a non-pressurized plastic bottle. Now there's gonna be other reasons that a vehicle is gonna overheat, head gaskets, uh, coolant concentrations, but the majority of the problems you're gonna have overheating on your car are gonna be one of these five issues. Thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you next time.